This is VOA News. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton. The governor of the U.S. state of Georgia has declared a state of emergency and called up the National Guard after a weekend of protests that coincided with the U.S. Independence Day holiday. Republican Governor Brian Kemp announced on Monday he will deploy as many as 1,000 guardsmen across Atlanta, the state capital, after four people were killed and the headquarters of the Georgia State Patrol were broken into and ransacked over the weekend. Kemp had threatened on Sunday to take action if Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, a Democrat, failed to do so. Violence in the city has been tied to anti-racism protests that were sparked in May with the death in police custody of George Floyd in the U.S. state of Minnesota and the shooting in June of Atlanta resident Rayshard Brooks in a confrontation with police. The Atlanta Consti Journal-Constitution reported that at least 93 people were shot in Atlanta between May 31st and June 27th this year. That's double the number from the same period last year. Also Monday, Atlanta's Mayor Bottoms reported she has tested positive for coronavirus, although she added in a tweet that she, she does not have any symptoms. A U.S. federal judge has ruled in favor of Michael Pack, the chief executive of the U.S. Agency for Global Media. That's the federal agency that oversees VOL as other, uh, VOA as well as several other broadcast entities. Uh, the decision, uh, a lawsuit over PAC's decision to fire the heads of government-funded international news agencies. A district, court judge, a district court chief judge, Beryl Howell, denied a request to reverse PAC's decision to replace the agency heads, saying the decision belongs at the ballot box rather than in court. PAC took control of U.S. AGM last month. From Washington, D.C., you're listening to VOA News. On Monday, the U.S. Supreme Court refused to free electors from state laws that use penalties to fo force them to support the candidate who prevails in the state's popular vote. This is part of a complex electoral college system that decides the U.S. president. The justices unanimously declined to endorse the discretionary power of electors just months before the November 3rd presidential election. The justices ruled in favor of Washington state and Colorado, which had imposed penalties on several so-called faithless electors who defied pledges in 2016 to vote for the winner of their state's popular vote. China urged France Monday to guarantee a fair and just environment for its companies after Paris decided to restrict licenses for telecom operators using 5G technology from Huawei. The United States and Australia have banned the company from their 5G networks, with the U.S. raising concerns the company's technology could be used by China to spy on other countries. The Financial Times reported on Monday Britain could decide this month to phase out the company's equipment from its system. The central Chinese city of Wuhan, the epicenter of the new coronavirus pandemic, raised its flood alert level on Monday as torrential rain and thunderstorms battered swaths of the country, including the Yangtze River on which it sits. Wuhan upgraded its emergency flood response to level two from level three, the second highest on its four-tier scale, after days of heavy downpours submerged many of its roads. A federal judge ruled Monday that a controversial pipeline that runs through Native American lands in North Dakota be shut down by August 5th. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe of North Dakota has opposed the pipeline for years and continually fought against it at various stages of its construction and use, including months of protests which often turned violent. Monday's order mandates that the pipeline be shut down and that all oil be removed within 30 days. Somaliland, a self-declared independent region of Somalia in East Africa, has formally recognized Taiwan, another government that lacks United Nations recognition. The establishment of ties between the two self-governing territories provides a boost to Taiwan, which for years has waged a losing battle against Beijing to win or maintain the diplomatic recognition of small nations. Somaliland is a self-declared state, internationally considered to be an autonomous region of Somalia. China claims Taiwan as its own territory and is opposed to the island's membership in the United Nations. China cuts off diplomatic ties with countries that recognize Taiwan, and that's a tactic that has left Taipei shut out of most international forums. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton. You're listening to VOA News.